Welcome. I am so glad that you can join us for this, the final installment in the series, Perspective from Havana, in a year of COVID-19 and the U.S. embargo. Really glad. As you are aware, whether intentionally sabotaging us or simply one of those technical glitches, Zoom wiped out all 850 registrations. And those of you who are present are here because you managed to re-register in time, which is terrific. Thank you. My name is Miriam Ansara. I'm speaking to you from Havana, from where I spent part of the year, and from the house of Esteban Morales and Katia Deliano. With the five weeks of this series, we have tried to give you a glimpse of what life has been like in Havana this past year from the perspective of five extremely interesting Cubans immersed in the daily as well as the intellectual life of their country. Inadvertently, we have also given you a glimpse of the technical challenges that people in Cuba face with the internet and other connections with the intentional world. These two are an important part of the US embargo. And I think tonight we may learn a little bit more about the factors that are in play in U.S. relations with Cuba. Our main sponsors are Massachusetts Peace Action, the Latin American Solidarity Coalition of Western Massachusetts, and the Center for Cuban Studies. And there are 18 other sponsoring organizations across the U.S. and Canada. And we thank all of these organizations for bringing all of you to us. David Faya and Isabel Rodriguez will not be able to join us this Tuesday, May 11th. Perhaps in the future, we can catch up with them again. Instead, this week's program is with Esteban Morales. Is there a future for Cuba-U.S. relations? Esteban Morales is in a unique position to address this question. As well as being an economist, political scientist, and member of Cuba's Academy of Sciences, He's a founder of the University of Havana's Center for the Study of the United States and for 20 years served as its director. He's well known at home and abroad for his broad knowledge, provocative thinking and writing, and deep analysis on both domestic and international questions. Our moderator is Gloria Caballero, also from Cuba and now based in Holyoke, Massachusetts and running for that city's mayor, the first Cuban-American mayor in Massachusetts, assisted by Sandra Levinson of the Center for Cuban Studies and Paul Harrison of Massachusetts Peace Action and Brian Garvey. I want to note that Gloria completed defense yesterday of her second PhD, this one in women's gen and gender studies and diversity, and the project was Afro-Cuban embodiment diaspora and transnational experience. What a mayor she will make. We'll follow our usual format this evening. I'll ask us David a first question and he will talk for 12 to 15 minutes. From there, Gloria with Sandra and Cole's assistance will ask questions to us David from the chat. To make it easier for them to sort through the questions, we ask that you pose questions only to us David. Other questions, Cole last week posted my email and you can write to me other questions and I'll find answers for you, either myself or from our co-sponsoring organizations. About four minutes before we end and for five to seven minutes after, as usual, Cole will post in the chat and we will announce the steps you can take to help lift the sanctions and end the US embargo. This is an important aspect of this program. We want you to listen, and we also want you to act. And we can report, and hopefully we'll have a minute for Bob Schwartz to report, that the campaign for syringes to Cuba is taking off like wildfire, and there's already three containers worth uh, fundraised for. Antonio at the Latin American Working Group has also reported a distinct uptick and signatures in their petition. So when we end the meeting and have kept it open, other people are welcome to put in the chat and please wait until then. Other actions that they would like people to take. But please, it's difficult if there's all kinds of comments and, and discussion in the chat. It's actually quite difficult to sort through the questions. So please let's stick to that so that we can make the most of a statement's time. 
So a statement. What do you think? Is there a future for U.S. Cuba? Ah, excuse me, Cuba U.S. relations. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> well, imagine 60 years of embargo of the blockade of the United States over Cuba. And now we have a new president in the United States. Was the last president to our situation was very complex, very dangerous, and very hard. But now we have a new president. For this reason, it is true that President Biden has a lot of problem to deal with. And Cuba is not among the top priority. I don't even think it could be a priority for them. Never felt Cubans on both sides of the Florida Strait continue to suffer as a true were still in office. Which is an insufferable paradox, more so for someone who say in this presidential campaign that he will follow Obama's policies. I found memory for most Cubans. This is not a political issue, I can say, Mr. President. This is a human issue. Mothers, children, fathers suffer on both sides because they cannot receive or send remittances. Visit their loved one, send or receive medicine, food, and more. So far, these people continue to be victims as a, if to still control everything. The political issue being more complex, we wait a little longer, but don't do see that humanitarian issue should be reached a bit. I don't think it will be so complicated to get back on track with visas, flights, mutual visits, people to people exchange, remittance, allowing tourists, providing certain economic facilities. I know that it's a little more complex to get rid of true infamous measure of declaring us on the list of countries that protect terrorists. An infamy, because it is Cuba that has suffered from the terrorists coming from over there from the US forever. You should take into consideration that box inside and outside the United States. This declaration putting us on the terrorist list was an extremely unpopular measures. Along with all the other 240 aggressive measures that Trump had already taken against Cuba. It's clear that this last measure was taken to make things more difficult for you. The action of a co-war who said that they had already lost. Actually, 
I do not see that it's a problem that at the same time that you are attending to your priorities. You launching mention in relation to Cuba. Everything has been said and more than negotiated. So there will be no need to invent anything you begin with. Everything is contained in his promise to return to Obama's policies. He has gained considerable domestic popularity besides having two people already appointed and accepted to have handled Cuba affairs in the past very efficient. What are you afraid of, Mr. President, unless you come out with the speech that say whatever it is I say and I say didn't say, don't make it deep. Cuban on both sides suffer anymore. Just hurry up even a little the fulfillment on your campaign promise. Also, we also know the history that one thing is said during the campaign and another when you are already in office. Also, I do not sincerely believe that this is your case. You seem to me to be a more serious politician. May I remind you that you also have the task of doing the disastrous two years. And for that, it is important that you manage to show that you can do everything better. None of the tasks you have clashed with changing your Cuban policies. I am sure that many busts inside and outside the United States will support you. More than 80 congressmen followed you. Many interested social groups, academics, intellectuals, religions, African-Americans, simple citizenship, and others. It is an area where true also can gain space for his intention to win back the Congress in 2022 and win the presidency in 2024. And next, he believes is a capable of, despite having been the most disaster presidents of the United States. Cuba is a nation already enjoy popularity in the United States. And be the world as well about all the blockade police against Cuba, demonstrate, and I'm sure that the ability for the rest of the task you have to fulfill. The American people are a noble, are working, country loving people who when reality allow them to move away from lies are for most part and a position to only themselves with the nobles of cause. Look at the position of Kugenan, the fight for civil rights, the fight against racism, the desire to reach out to the other people, etc. To try to poison the people of the United States will have the task 
and the ability to bring them back to the past of true unity knowing, love for the nation to get out of the deception. And that can only be achieved by being consistent with the solution of the problems you have proposed to solve it. The pandemic, the economic crisis, unity, immigration, racism, and discrimination in relation with your early and the failed policy of development against Cuba. Cuba is a close neighbor which does hate the American people because despite all the US policy have made it suffer, Cuba has never harbored any hatred toward the people of the United States. It has been 100 years of your presidential terms and you have done nothing to improve Cuba policy. Do you even maintain the 242 blockades measures implemented by Trump that you have already made your own. Moreover, the first statement directed of, at Cuba has been to accuse us once again of violation of democracy and human rights. You reinforce this big keeping Cuba of the list of countries that promote terrorists. When you know that, this, that it has been the United States that has applied a state terrorist measures against Cuba. It is the US that has invaded us, that has supported other aggressive paramilitary measures against Cuba and continues attack us. Now, now, on the German mandate, US agency continue to give money for subvention in Cuba and ask if that were to not know. Enemy of Cuba, people pay you money to subvention the activity uh, against our people in Cuba. So, Mr. President, it seems we should wait for you to fulfill your campaign promise. Since you are already following practically to the letter, the same aggressive policy of truth against Cuba. To put in another way, you are doing to Cuba the same as true. Moreover, we find it's very dangerous, very threatening that you have already spent the first 100 days in office, not saying anything about policy toward Cuba, but you are taking actions against us, accusing us of violating human rights, leaving in place the 242 measures that Trump adopted against Cuba, and keeping us on the list of the country that promote the terrorists. What are you hiding from us, President? What are you trying to deceive and surprise us with, Mr. President? I excuse our mystery, but it seems to us that you are more willing to follow the same failed policies against Cuba going on for more than 60 years than to fulfill your campaign promise, just in case we tell you do not get your hopes up and don't be fully by difficulty Cuba in going through right now. Our people and our government are very unity and are working hard to overcome them. And we are overcoming them. And at the same time, we are receiving solidarity 
of the higher order from not just the rest of the world, world from the American people and the world. Also, we have always put everything on the line to think first of all in our internal strengths. Also, we are grateful to our friends, we, but we know that we are the first one who must help our service or the help that come from outside to be fruitful. Take care, Mr. President, that the same thing that has happened to others over the past 60 years does not happen to you. Thank you very much. So everybody. Well, Gloria, now the question. Yes. Now, Gloria and Sandy, can you please, uh, can you please start the questions? Yes. So can far, you hear I me? Don't see questions. Yes. Okay. So yes, there's a question. Um, it could be um, taken as a common question. And it comes from Rhonda Hungerford. Before I start, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us one more week. Um, thank you so much. And um, Stephen, Rhonda Hungerford, she's asking if maybe the problem is the Cuban Americans, especially in Florida, wanting to maintain the sanctions, knowing that Florida is a very important state politically. Yes. How would you react to that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for a long time, the state of Florida was a very complicated issue to Cuba. But now the condition, the politics condition inside of this state changed many, especially in the last, I think, 15 or 20 years. A step by a step in this state, there is many people who pass relation with Cuba, many people who want to leave the embargo also, and many people who want to have a rela normal relation with Cuba. The cause of this issue is after the 80 years, the people who arrived the state of Florida from Cuba was more new people. Many people of them live inside of the Cuban Revolution. Many people of them receive the benefits inside of Cuba. And they go to the United States with other little mentality. They don't go to the United States as enemy of Cuba. They go to the United States, especially for economic reasons. And for this reason, they come to the United States and they no participate in the counter revolution inside of the state of Florida. And at the same, at the same time, the composition of this group is a group who want to live better in the United States, but they come to the United States to help her family in Cuba. For this reason, the people inside of Florida to maintain the negative attitude toward Cuba, to continue to defend the blockade, and to continue uh, want to the bad relation between Cuba and the United States, and not the totally of the people who live in the state of Florida. In the state of Florida now live many people who want a good relation with Cuba. Also, there is a Cuban Americans who want to 
come to Cuba to invest inside in Cuba. And there is many people who visit her family and invite her family to the United States. And the relation between the Cuba and the state of Florida now is better in comparison with the, at the beginning of the revolution or also in the 60 year, in the 70 years. After the 80 years, the, the situation between Cuba and the state of Florida, I think changed in very good direction. I don't know if, if I respond to your question. Okay. Okay, well, I hope um, Rhonda has you know, satisfied with um, your answer, Esteban. Um, at this time, Mary would like to ask you a question, to ask a question. Mm -hmm. I have been waiting for this evening so I can ask you something, which I have, uh, I have heard you hint at. Do you think, now we all have been convinced of the various reasons why Biden is not doing anything. He's got domestic priorities. He has these Cuban American senators that on his back, et cetera, et cetera. However, do you think Biden being Biden, that there's a chance that he's waiting to see if inaction will bring down the revolution and he won't have to do anything? Well, why Biden? waiting to change the policy toward Cuba. Because at that moment, we are in a very hard economic situation. And also inside of Cuba, go back again, setting country revolutionary groups who want to put the situation in the hard moment to give Biden the possibility to attack Cuba and don't change the policy toward Cuba. Uh, maybe the perception of this administration is this is a good moment to, to then not change the policy toward Cuba, despite at the what did say in the campaign election. Inside of the campaign election, they say, I will change the policy toward Cuba. I agree with the policies of Obama in the, in the moment, and I will change the policy toward Cuba. But after 100 days, of the administration, they did nothing. On, on, we don't can say nothing. All that they did are a back issue. For example, the report of the State Department about the human rights and democracy in Cuba. They again attack Cuba with the human rights and with the the problem of the democracy in Cuba. Uh, they maintain the measure of Obama of, of, of Trump toward Cuba, the 242 measures against Cuba, measure of the blockade toward Cuba. Uh, they maintain uh, Cuba in the list of the people who don't protect the, the don't protect the, 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 the protect the terrorists, and after that, they they doing this against Cuba and continue in this position and don't say nothing about the possibility to change the policy toward Cuba. I don't do nothing because they maybe think is the moment they have the perception to this moment is the moment to finish with Cuba. 
but they are totally in mistake because in Cuba, the counter revolution cannot move inside of the country. It's impossible. This, the counter revolution don't go back to Cuba again. We live many years of very criminal counter revolution in Cuba. And this counter revolution will not go back to Cuba again. Because we, the, because at the support of the people inside of Cuba, at the same time, because we are in control of the political situation, the, the government is in control of the political situation in Cuba. And this government now, with the president Diaz Canel, are very happy because the new president did many to to the advance of Cuba, to the solution of the different economic problem of Cuba. Uh, are they working very hard, are very good in front of the pandemic? Cuba, really, we are very worried with the pandemic, but if you compare the situation of the pandemic inside of Cuba, the figures of the pandemic inside of Cuba with the pandemic in other uh, country of the world, our situation is uh, have no comparison. Why? Because we have a very good system of, of, uh, of peer. We have a very big organization. We have many centers that Fidel funded in the 80 years. And we have many doctors, many nurses, many people, also young people, students of medicine who are working in the pandemic in Cuba. But we are worried with the pandemic. But we are worried about today that 10 people, when in other country that die uh, 1,000 or 500 in Cuba, we lost and we suffer this because it's really, it's a big problem to us because the medicine in Cuba is very good for the people, but the pandemic in Cuba have not, it really is big, it's not big, big, big problem in comparison with other situations in other places in the world. But mm -hmm. we have in this moment a complicated situation inside the economy. We have the pandemic in this moment and we have in this moment a group of people who are doing counter revolution inside of Cuba to put the, the domestic situation in Cuba in the more uh, better picture to food, feed the 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 the, the perception that in Cuba there is a moment to finish with the Cuban revolution. Yeah, I mean, but the, 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 the camera is it's not very good. Hello? <laughs> not muted. Please mute yourself, everybody. Yes? Okay. Can we continue? Next question, please, Gloria. Okay, so um, so Jill Hamburg wants to know to what extent does Senator Robert Menendez exercise a type of veto on Cuba policy, given that with the 50-50 split in the Senate, he can threaten to withhold his vote on any legislation. Uh -huh. So to what Menendez. extent does Menendez exercise a type of veto on Cuba policy? 
Oh, yes. No, not only Menendez and other people. We said these people, the mafia, the Cuban American mafia. When we use these terms, we cannot offend these people. Mm. But really, their action as a, as a mafia. Why is it as a mafia? For example, the people, Menendez. Menendez have no moral, any moral to attack Cuba. Menendez was accused some times ago with many uh, situations, very immoral situation. And they want to move the situation inside of the Cuban Americans to attack Cuba. So this is history issue. This is a, a very long time confrontation with Cuba. Now they have less power to confront Cuba than before. Before they can to move the situation inside of the Congress, and they have a good power inside the Congress. Now have not this power uh, to move the policy toward Cuba. It's the Biden president, it's the president Biden want to change the policy toward Cuba, cannot pay attention inside of Florida with these Cuban American peoples. Because inside of Florida, there is many people who will support a good policies of violence toward Cuba. Also, with Obama, people who advance many in the policy toward Cuba and establish the embassy inside of Cuba, these people inside of the Florida cannot attack Obama sufficient to lose, to left the new politics of Obama toward Cuba. Because they are a step by step lose power inside the Congress and inside of the state of Florida in the United States, which uh, clash with them when they have many power inside of the uh, state of Florida. But now they have no possibility to attack Cuba and be uh, successful in this attack toward Cuba. Before we go on, let me just remind everybody, please turn off your video. We understand it's very difficult and you're very brave to want to, or very committed to try to want to listen, but please everybody turn off your, your video. So Esteban, I have, what? you know, um, I three, I have many interesting, not only questions, but comments. And um, this one, for instance, is from um, Art Young. And this person says that in the past, you, Stephen, have often voiced concerns over the delays in implementing economic reforms and dealing with social problems such as racism, poverty, and corruption. So this person's question is, how do you think the recent party Congress has affected the political terrain in Cuba? And has it opened the door to making more progress on these issues? Now we are implementing the uh, we are implementing the economy reform in Cuba. Now 
And we have a very good and very interesting debate inside of Cuba about this reform. We have in Cuba dogmatism with this reform. And we have in Cuba people who don't want to listen about nothing of capitalism. And I have a, an article, recently article, when I explain the Cuban economy is a Cuban is economy in transition. The move ahead to the socialist is a cross a period of the transition where you more respect all the economy inside of Cuba. You more respect the private economy. You must respect the little economy. You must respect the state economy. You must respect the cooperative. You must respect the foreign investment. All the form of the commerce of the, of the economy must working together inside of the economy transition. And I defend this position, and many people defend this position. Theoretical position and practical position. Without economy private, it's impossible the construction of the socialists. In our case, without foreign investment, it's impossible the construction of socialists. Without the cooperative, it's impossible the construction of the socialists. And I think at the end, understand very good this issue. <laughs> For this reason, our economy reform go ahead in process of the respect of all the economy working inside of Cuba. Because the economy reform inside of Cuba must do it in the direction of the Cuba is an economy in transition. Mm. Cuba is not a capitalist economy, but it's not socialist yet. It's in process, it's going the interest to the control of the socialists. But before arrive the socialists, there is other period of time when you must combat again to the capitalist economy. And mm. you must use capitalist form to advance inside of the Cuban economy with the state economy. Mm. The state economy really advance is they combine with all the economy form inside Mm -hmm. And this is a very clear for many people in Cuba. In my last article, also is in my blog, I have a blog. Mm -hmm. I have an article saying the Cuban economy is a transition economy. If we understand this, we solve it. We solve mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Is do is we understand this, we will have you around. I don't know, you see it. It's a very complex issue. It's, yes, it is. It is. Um, precisely because. Issue, but this is a theoretical issue. Do you know 
Really, do you know the program of Gotha of Mars? Read the program of Gotha of Mars, and you can look. Never Mars said, and Mars is our principal guy in our society. Never Max, Mars, and never the principal Marxist said that the construction of socialism is without private economy. Never. You cannot cut, cut the process of capitalism and arrive immediately to the socialism. It's a crazy. It's a crazy issue. No. Inside the socialists, you must combine the private relation with the state relation. But we did a revolution, a very important revolution. And the people ha here have the power sufficient, and the state have the uh, power, sufficient power to do what they must do with the state economy and the private economy. Mm -hmm. It's impossible constructing the socialists without private economy. And in our case, on the developing country, poor country, it's impossible to construct the socialists without the foreign private Invest. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have one more question. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pat. Um, <laughs> uh, Esteban, yes. Go, so, go. There's one this more. Is my work. This is my job. That's your job. That's this your is work. My job. Yeah. That's your expertise, Esteban. Ese es la, en lo que yes. tú eres experto. That's your expertise. And we all appreciate it. Yes. Uh, uh, I am all people. I have the American relation, Cuba US relation. This is my, my topic. I have different book about that, also in the United States. I attended the Cuban economy too, but I am not so a specialist in the Cuban economy, but I know the Cuban economy, and I live in Cuba. Mm -hmm. And first, I attended the problem of race relation in Cuba. I have a book in the United States. I have a book in Cuba. And at the same time, I have a very big interest in the international relation. Yes. All the international relation is my, of my interest. Why? Because Cuba live inside the world. And there is many issues to have relation with Cuba. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Cuba does not I live in a void. Mm -hmm. I have interest and we share the relation between the United States, China, and Russia. Because this relation affects Cuba. Of course. I have interest inside of Latin America because Cuba is inside Latin America. I have interest in Caribbean because we are a part of the Caribbean. And we must be very attentively. What is the movement of all the world? Because we must be attentive. In inside, what is the situation of the world? Because my op theoretical opinion is we must predict, we must do prediction about all the issues who have affected you. Mm. Mm -hmm. All issues who can affect Cuba, we must be very attentive because 
to predict who can be is a die of life for Cuba. Mm -hmm. It's a problem very important for Cuba because we are a little country, we are a poor country, and the United States consider us enemy, and the United States the more biggest potency on the world, and we must be very attentive to what most can do in each moment. Yes. Esteban, precisely, uh, you mentioned China, and Pat Fry has a question. This person says that he, or oh, that person understands that there is a bipartisan effort to uncover the source of a sonic so-called attack on the U.S. Embassy personnel in Cuba and China. So what is your understanding of this issue as an obstacle for Biden to move to reverse the Trump reversals of policy. So again, he says that there is, that person says that there is an understanding that there is a bipartisan effort to uncover the source of the sonic so-called attack on the US um, embassy personnel in Cuba and in China. So what do you know about this issue? And if this is an, an obstacle for Biden to move to reverse the Trump reversals of policy. Excuse me. Repeat mm -hmm. in Spanish. Please. Sí. ¿Cuál es? Sí. Él dice que se entiende que hay como un esfuerzo bipartisano ¿no? para descubrir, para destapar la fuente de los ataques sónicos que ocurrieron en la embajada. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh. Okay, okay. Anybody know what this is that the sonic attack? First of all, there is not attack. Cuba didn't attack anybody. This moment was a moment when certain people in the United States one affected the policy of the United States over Cuba. And they use the instrument of the attack Sony to affect it, the possibility of the best policies of the United States of what But anybody discovered what is the problem of attack? Now they say there is a there is Sony attack in other place in the United States and in other place in the world. Cuba give their all the opportunity to investigate also together with the United States was from in the attack or the sonic attack. Because anybody can say nothing. But inside of this process of investigation, never the United States want to the possibility the interview with the people of the people who suffer the sonic attack inside of Cuba. Mm. They are not very, very clear. They are not very amplified the possibility to Cuba investigate with the American people, what from Cuba with the Soviet attack. They cannot accuse Cuba about this. This is a, a problem of, they use this as a political issue. But never they can say what is the problem with the Soviet attack. Now they have problem with the Sony attacking in, in, in many places. 
and anybody know what is the problem of the sonic attack. And Cuba said, you want to investigate with us? We have, we, we, we want to give all facility to this investigation. Give you the facility to investigate the issue. But never in the United States permit the possibility to Cuba in, interview with the people who suffer the sonic attack inside of Cuba. Never, never. And Cuba gives all the facility which, which want to come here, a group without, without Cuba, uh, in, uh, in, com in combination with our scientific investigate what's wrong, but anybody at today know nothing what's wrong with the attack inside uh, the embassy of the United States. And also in the hotel, because in the hotel too were some problems. In the street, inside the, in the embassy, in the house of the official from the of officials, American embassy was problem too. But anybody know what is the problem? There is the United States cannot accuse Cuba because they have not real cause to attack Cuba in this issue. Mm -hmm. I think well, I'm going to close. Yeah, you know, we have. We have run out of time, so Gloria, we have to ask Cole yes. what to do. Now, <laughs> I would like to ask everybody, though, usually five minutes before we close, we tell you what you can do to lift sanction, sanctions and end the embargo. And we have a whole list of things you can do. Cole, can you please put them in the chat and I would like to ask everybody to put in the chat your commitment to take at least one of these actions. Uh, yes, we know who a statement is, Cole, move along. They, we have three different petitions you can sign. We have a letter to write to, um, to uh, President Biden, your very own own senators and representatives. We have a link so you can contribute to the purchase of, oh, so now my internet connection is unstable. Um, so you can contribute to purchasing syringes. But could you please put into the chat that you promise that you will do something? And then also put in the chat if there's another caravan schedule so that people know how to join that. And Cole, can you tell us how much longer we can stay on? I, myself. You can stay on as long as you want. Long. There's no, we don't really have another event coming. So you can stay on for 15 minutes, whatever you think. Mm-hmm. No worries. See, two kids again. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Don't worry. Here's here's the deal. Until tomorrow, we see one. Okay, so here's Please, the deal, everyone. If you put your promises in the chat that you will sign petitions, write letters, join caravans, and contribute to these syringes, then we can continue. But first, I would like Bob Schwartz to take two minutes and tell us what's going on with the syringe campaign, because this is one of the most important actions that we've taken in decades. Bob Schwartz, can you do that? I'd be happy to. Can you hear me? Mary, can you hear me? Yes. yes. OK, great. Uh, five weeks ago, Mary, when you first started this webinar, uh, sending syringes to Cuba was a dream. Uh, we had and never Paul, thought we'd be able to. Us for a minute so we can hear Bob. Say what? Say again, Mary. Are you good? Go ahead, okay. Bob. So I was saying five, five weeks ago, Mary, when you first started these webinars with Peace Action, sending syringes to Cuba was just a dream. And over the last five weeks, 
we've obtained a Commerce Department license. We've begun raising funds to send syringes to Cuba. Our initial goal was to send two and a half million syringes to Cuba. We we're hoping to raise $100,000. We now have sufficient funds, and it's thanks to a lot of people that are on this call right now. Uh, we've got enough funds available to send probably 5 million syringes to Cuba. And if we keep pushing over the next few weeks, my hope is that we're going to be able to send 10 million syringes to Cuba. Uh, as most people on the call know, Cuba has vaccines. They're going to start vaccinating later this month. Uh, their ambition is to vaccinate the entire population by the end of the year. They're, uh, they're gonna need 30 million syringes in total. They're 20 million syringes short. So it's incumbent on all of us to kick in as best we can. And many of you have been very, very generous over the past five weeks. Uh, but if you haven't contributed, please step up. Uh, my organization is spearheading this effort. It's Global Health Partners, and you can find a uh, secure donation site, ghpartners.org. And uh, I could promise you that 100% of whatever you donate is going to be put to use in purchasing syringes for Cuba. So I'll turn it back to you, Esteban. You did very well. Mary, you did very well from Havana under very difficult circumstances. I don't know how you did it, but thanks for the time. Cole? Yep. Okay, we're back. Gloria, Esteban. carry on. Yeah, Esteban. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, yes. Can you please clear up what is the difference between um, when, the, when does dissent become counter-revolution? This is a comment that was in the chat and I, I want you to you know, comment on that. What's the difference between dissent and counter-revolution? When does dissent become counter-revolution? Well, I have an article in my blog. The name, the name is the, the name case of San Isidro. We are a poor country. And yes, the revolutionary government did many, many during more than 60 years to do better the condition of life of the people. But there is a part of Cuba, and especially inside also the province of Havana, where the condition of life are not the best. Step by step, the people obtain better house, better condition of life, But the situation of Cuba at the triumph of the revolution was very hard. Cuba was really very poor. We were not the worst country inside of Latin America and also in Caribbean. The problem of Cuba was the, in general, the poorest. We have very good production of sugar harvest. We were the first country in Latin America who have the railroad. We have the one of the first content who have the TV, the television, the channel of television. 
we have certain material condition very good. But what which the problem? The problem is the distribution of the rich in Cuba. The, distribu the distribution of the rich in Cuba was very inequality. And we have in the top of the society a group of people who live very good. More down in this top, there is a little middle class, white, more or less white, who lives very good. They are connecting with the American capital. They working in the American fabric, in the foreign bank, etc. And until this to down, there is a massive pool of people. Massive pool of people. Live in the worst condition. For this reason, inside of Cuba, we can do it better the situation of the people. But there is a rest of people who cannot arrive yet to the worst, to the best condition of their life. And this is a certain towns in Cuba who have not the best condition of their life. And the counter revolution always fight with these people. In this town live revolutionary people, a good people, police people with a social condition very bad. And the counter revolution in Cuba step by step, step by step, are changing their method. And the method of the counter-revolution now inside Cuba is gain this kind of people who live in the worst condition. Again, the black people inside of Cuba. Again, of the poor people. All these people have job, have a condition of life better than in 1959. But we must do it to they live more better. Okay? Because if we don't do that, this population can be conquested by the country rules. And inside San Isidro, there is a good people. There is a revolutionary people. There is a wonderful people. Although this, there is a people who live inside of this town in the condition not very good. And the counter revolution attack of this from inside of Cuba. Okay? And this is a very important issue. And we are we in Cuba we are working very hard with the social science investigation inside of Cuba. Do you remember what do Fidel with the people who don't work in and don't study in the 80s. The, the social, the work is social. Do you remember this experience of Fidel? Of this group of people, we catch many, and they now are universitarian. They are studying at the university, etc. 
because in Cuba, the the, the poor always was black, and the rich never was black. The rich always was white. Who mm -hmm. more uh, received of the advantage of the revolution, many black people, because they are who live worse in Cuba, because the black people in Cuba came from the slavery system. Okay. In Cuba, there is not that in the United States. In Cuba, we have the, the black was a slave always in the colonization system. And when we arrived to the truth of the revolution in 1959, was a one million of illiterate and the big majority of these one million of military was black. When you, you take the measure, the statistics of a house, employment, etc., the blacks always worse, were in the worst condition of the life. And 50 years is not enough to possible solution of the situation. Also, we lose from the blockade many money because the blockade affected many to Cuba. For example, in the last two months, only in the last two months, Cuba lost 800 millions. And in the, these years, we lost 126,000 million of dollars for the blockage. If we have this money in Cuba, what we can do with this money in Cuba? Imagine a poor people rose 126,000 million of dollars. It's a crime. It's a big crime. It's a back dreams. You believe a back dreams in front of the attack, in front of the blockade of the United States. A really back dreams in front of the United States. Thank you, Esteban. Esteban, before we go, would you like to leave us with any words that you'd like to say to all of us listening to you, learning from you? Is there any final thoughts that you would like to share with us? Yeah. Ultimas palabras. In Espanol, Gloria. In Spanish. Sí. Si tienes algunas últimas palabras para todos nosotros y nosotras que estamos aquí escuchándote y aprendiendo para concluir tu presentación. What do you say in Spanish? Si hay últimas palabras que tú quieres dar. Oh, yes, I have a message. Step by step, more people are helping Cuba in front of the blockade of the United States. Uh, we need this continue and increase the solidarity with Cuba. Because we are a people who are strong for a long time for our independence, for our country. We live three wars independence. The Cuban, we are struggling for our independence for more than 200 years. 
And there is many people also in the United States who love Cuba and want to help to Cuba. I want to say this is the best. I want to say thank you very much for all these people to help my poor country. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Esteban. Gloria. Gloria. Yeah. Sí. And I'll ask Sandy too. Do you have any final words to say as we wrap up these five weeks? And also as a Cuban, well, I claim you as a Cuban American and future mayor, but as a Cuban, do you have any final words to say, Gloria? Yes. I want to thank everybody who throughout so many decades have committed to fighting for justice, for inclusion, for solidarity. I wanna thank all the organizations that have always been there supporting our scientists, our artists, and all the wonderful ideas that come out of Cuba. I wanna thank the Cuban Americans, I wanna thank the Americans, and I wanna thank everybody who thinks that human rights is also something that has to be treasured. It is something that has to be revered because we are spiritual beings. And I thank everybody for all the efforts that have always, that has always been making and trying to present themselves as decent people um, powerful people, courageous people. These are hard times for all. And as a Cuban person, I really appreciate your bravery and your support to my country. Thank you so much, Mary, for putting together all these you know, wonderful sessions. It takes a lot of time and wisdom and solidarity. Thank you so much to the Massachusetts Peace Action and the section for the Latin American Solidarity Coalition. Thank you everybody for your love to love, <laughs> for your love to life and for your love to freedom. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Sandy, would you like to say anything? Yes, our I would. Sponsor, our Mass Coalition, Latin American Solid, uh, Solidarity Coalition of Western Mass and the Center for Cuban Studies, represented here by Sandra Levinson. I would like to say something. You're in trouble, Mary, because doing this indicates that it's necessary to continue doing it and to do it with a lot of strength. And I think that one of the things the Cubans have shown us is that they're not afraid of any question. And we have to ask more questions and get more answers and keep asking and keep communicating to people in this country how abrasive and horrible the blockade Unfortunately, is. Unfortunately, Sandy, you're... What? You can't hear me? I, we hear her fine. We hear Sandra fine from here. Okay. Well, I just want to emphasize the importance of continuing to communicate what Cubans think, how Cubans feel, and what's happening in Cuba to everyone in this country, and to, doing, to do it in the way that they're ready to hear it, whether we have to speak in soft tones, in tough tones, we have to have the right information and we can only get the right information from Cubans who pay attention to what's happening there. So thanks a lot, Mary. But as I said at the beginning, you're in trouble because we have to continue doing this as often as possible. And I wanna thank all of our co-sponsors. You've been great. And I wanna urge everyone to join the Center for Cuban Studies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Esteban, my dear. Thank you, Mary. And thank you, Gloria, of course, so, and Cole, everyone. Thank you, everyone. I want to say, first of all, we're on a different machine now because Zoom shut us down on that one, but we pulled them. We're on a different one. 
And now it's I perfect. Would say none of this, none of this would have been possible without Massachusetts Peace Action. And I want to suggest that people take a really good look at this organization. It has been around, well, it's been around since the 1960s, but in its current iteration, it has been around since 1987 or 1989. Their concept of peace includes Cuba. It includes Yemen. It includes Korea. It includes Iran. It includes healthcare for all. Cole, you'd have to give me the list. But for them it, to it open includes, up their facility. Include, it includes Sheikh Jarrah as well. Well, for them to open up their facilities and put this much energy and time and resources into a five week series on Cuba has been very special. And if Yes, people should join the Center for Cuban Studies. They also <laughs> should join Massachusetts Peace Action and it, sign up to get their weekly calendar and you will find out about all kinds of events, both sponsored by Mass Peace Action and simply listed by them. Uh, so a huge, huge thank you to Cole, Ryan, Amar, and all of the volunteers and chairs and committees. You've made this possible. And there we see Cole, we see him. Do you wanna add anything, Cole? Uh, uh, thank you for those kind words, Mary. Thank you, Esteban, Sandy, Gloria. It's been a great series and we look forward to more Cuba solidarity, Latin American solidarity, international solidarity in the days, weeks and months to come. Thank you all. You're so lucky to live in Massachusetts. We are. Yes, we are. We also have work to do here. We may be the bluest state, but we still have a long way to go in Massachusetts. We all do. Okay, so ache para todo el mundo. Buenas noches, ache, ache, ache. Ache, ache. Gracias. Ears, but this may not be the last they see of us. Yeah. I certainly hope not. <laughs> Are we on mute to clap? <laughs> Yay! Bravo! Bravo! <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. 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 Okay, now we can get rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Okay, oh no. Who I see? Okay, oh no. Thank you, Glass. Thank you. Thank you. Great webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Thank 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 you. Hasta pronto. Bye, Esteban. Gracias. Thank you. Mary, bye bye. Thank you, Mary. Bye. Mary. Bye. Tienes que visitar a mi mamá, Mary. <laughs> ah, sí. Lo, lo llamaré. Vale, vale. Chao, chao. Bye, bye Esteban. Bye. bye, Sandy. Bye, everyone. Bye, Cole. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.